All right, all right, man, I got going. Hey, everybody, how y'all doing today? Tim Nash with Scogman Realty here. Um, I am here today in Marion again, and I am here for my second uh, interview in a new series I'm doing called Veteran Owned Iowa. I'm looking, I'm in going around uh, Eastern Iowa interviewing um, prior service members or, or even current service members, if they're in the Guard or the Reserves, who um, are who have took it upon themselves to start their own business and uh, own and operate their own business. So today I'm with Ben Davis of the Marion Chocolate Shop. And um, oh yes, I'm supposed to say this. If you like this video, go to my channel, like this, and then please subscribe and you can see more videos like this, hopefully on a regular basis. So, all right, well, here with Ben Davis. How you doing, Ben? Doing well, how are Fantastic. you doing? Fantastic, thank you. Doing great. Ben's been on lunch with friends before. I kind of did a promo thing with him. We kind of did like a short little video out in front of the yeah. shop. Yeah. But today, we're this is where the magic happens. So, um, what is this back here, real quick? Uh, so this is a fire cooker. It's basically a steam jacketed kettle. It's what I make caramel in, uh, or one of the places I make caramel. I make coffee in it, hot fudge. So it's kind yeah, of exactly. a, a good piece of equipment for me that sets me apart from you know what you could do at home. Sure. You know this is. Just kind of the first step towards being a, a little bit more manufacturer and Very industrial. Very cool. That's awesome. Fantastic. So, so yeah, we're in here in the in the kitchen. Um, you guys can't see it, but I'm looking at like two spoons. One has I think white chocolate on. One has dark has either. Yeah. Ah, it's probably like dark chocolate or maybe milk chocolate. So yeah, um, but yeah, this is where uh, they got. This is where they're making 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 magic happen. So um, what I want to talk to Ben a little bit about today is first off, okay, MOS. Engineers all the way. Engineers all the way. I thought you were infantry. No, I was a 12 series or 21 series my entire career. So Fantastic. engineer enlisted for about seven years and then engineer officer for 13. Yeah, I mean, so Ben and I uh, knew each other when he was, he's retired now, if you can't tell by his hair and his beard. Yep. Um, but uh, we knew each other uh, when he was still in the guard and for the first several years I knew Ben this this hair, the hair is looking yeah, good, man. Yeah, it's really, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, uh, fantastic. So engineers the entire time and, uh, any deployments on your belt? Yep. So I am deployed once as an enlisted guy, 2005, went to Iraq, uh, did a lot of rock clearance stuff. And then I went with the, uh, the brigade out of Iowa in 2010, 2011 to, um, Afghanistan as in an air base area. Sure. Whereabouts were you in 2005? Uh, Ambar province, so Ramadi. Okay. Yeah, like Baghdad, Fallujah, Ramadi yep. is where I was. Okay. I was, I was, I was in Baghdad solidly, and then I was out at Al Assad. Okay. Yeah. So I went up there. They had a pool up there, didn't they? Al Assad. They had a pool. Yeah. In Baghdad too. That too. In the yeah. green zone, they had a nice pool in the green zone. Yeah. It, yeah. it was a cushy deployment. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so, um, well, fantastic. Well, thank you for your service. Likewise. Um, and uh, so. Now you so how many years has it been now since you've been finished with the with the army? So I was working uh, AGR full time for the Iowa Guard. I resigned that position in July of last year, so I've been out of the full time side for a little over a year. Um, my retirement was official at the end of January this year, so I'm I'm just really at about uh, what nine months that I've been retired. And was this the main? motivation like was this the plan upon retirement like you guys had already had this in in place no it was actually um when so i was working up at university of northern iowa teaching rotc yep. and then i uh, got a call that hey your next job is in davenport and my family is homesteaded you know you went to life with my school or you went to school with i my went to wife. school with his wife yeah, yeah <laughs> my mother-in-law was one of your teachers yep, I mean, yep. your mom was one of my wife's teachers um, so we're pretty, my rooted, grandma or grandma, my right? grandma. Yeah. Yeah. So we're pretty rooted in the Marion area. And then just it, as Katie and I started working through it, trying to figure out how we were going to deal with our family and me commuting to yeah. you know, Davenport three hours a day. Yep. Um, we just kind of started looking at other options and this kind of popped up and, uh, Katie kind of halfway said, I think, Hey, we should buy the chocolate shop. And a week later we had an accepted offer. So that's, took crazy. It and ran That's with so it. awesome. That's yeah, yeah. I love it, and I love that. I lo uh, and um, you know that kind of um, spontaneity. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's kind of those things where you're just like, "Are we gonna do this?" Yes, yes, yes we are. Yes, we are. So yeah, so we are. Uh, we are. Yeah, if, if 
we haven't figured out, yes, we're in the kitchen, but we're in the chocolate shop, the Marion Chocolate Shop, which is right on 7th Ave, the main, uh, the main drag, if you will, of Uptown Marion. So, um, so they're pretty easy to find if you're in Marion. Um, so yeah, so you, so you decided that decided to do this, and how, I mean, how's it been going? Like, it, it's been going good. The uh, when we bought it, the previous owner stayed on for a couple weeks and kind of gave me just the the real nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken a couple professional courses since then, yep. uh, just to keep trying to kind of improve my skill. Uh, just you know, kind of like in the military, it's a profession, and part of being a profession is continuing to learn and educate yourself. And so I keep working on that and mm -hmm. having a lot of fun, trying a lot of new stuff. Uh, we were fortunate that we kept a couple employees from the previous ownership as well, so they've been able to teach me a lot as far as the how to run a retail store and how mm -hmm. to you know package gift boxes and that type of stuff. Sure. So they've been a huge asset for us, keeping that talent around. Yeah. Would you say that? Um, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is going to be, but would you say that your uh, experience, your military experience, has helped you? In, in a lot of ways, it in has. Um, it, the the attention to detail, the the planning, um, how how I'm going to make production for the week. So how a lot of what we do here, everything is kind of tiered mm -hmm. to where you know I will cook a batch of caramel today, and then we'll cut it and coat it in, in chocolate tomorrow. So yeah. everything's kind of sequenced. So a lot of when I'm looking at how I'm going to plan out, you know, the week or the month, yeah. is a lot of like what we did for trading plans and that type of stuff. <laughs> Everything kind of lines up, and if you miss a step, then you know you're. you're have you got an R for Gin model for the I, chocolate shop? I don't. I have a five year business plan. Five year business. So, so <laughs> that's an R right, model. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that works. Uh, yeah. SRM. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, no. So a lot of those skills, the planning, the, the logistics of it, yeah. do work out pretty well. I mop a lot, so mm -hmm. that was a good enlisted skill. That, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do a lot of that too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, MDMP, the Christmas season. Um, we do have some <laughs> some training meetings, kind of with uh, with the staff. We'll sit down and, and look through what the plan is. So not quite as detailed as MDMP, sure. but um, to kind of caveat outside the chocolate shop. Part of the reason why we got into this business is we wanted to invest in Marion, invest in the community. It. Yeah. And so I am on the Uptown Advisor Board now. Mm -hmm. I'm the Vice President for the Uptown Advisor Board. So it's a, a group of local community members, business owners, realtors, um, that help provide input to the planning of Uptown development Very as cool. part of the Chamber of Commerce. So right. in that, there is some more kind of MDMP type yeah. mentality that we're working on a, a 10 year strategy for the growth of Marion and how Uptown fits into the bigger picture. So that's awesome. So there, the military side does keep kind of no, it keeps it, popping, it, back it popping back up. You're like, oh, I, yeah, no, that's fantastic. Um, really, really glad to hear that you're just that you're more than just this business owner, but you're getting really engaged in the community. Definitely. Um, I, I, I've said it before, and I think what's happening here in uh, Uptown Marion is really exciting, and one of the most exciting things happening, I mean, in the area right now, as far as economic development and business, and it seems like um, the city of Marion really has a plan, and, and, and you're working with obviously working with them with that development piece, but. Really, as a they're really got a direction that they're going in, right. and they're executing, which is really yes. cool. Yeah, it's neat to see. It's understanding that's a you know almost a ten or twelve year old plan mm -hmm. that is what we're seeing now, and then being able to kind of sit at some of these planning meetings and understand what the next five to ten years looks like yeah. is is really neat. And seeing, like you said, the <coughs> excuse me, the leadership in Marion, the the chamber, the mayor. Um, you know, all of the volunteers in the community, how much they really care about growing the community and um, bringing things to do, bringing good businesses, a good mix of businesses and restaurants and, you know, nightlife. That mm -hmm. it's, it's just neat to see the town growing. Yeah. No, and I think that, I think that it's, I mean, I'm glad that, that you opened the chocolate shop or you, you kept the chocolate shop right. open. Um, I think that what people think when they want to see that development. I think the number one people I think is like, well, we want restaurants. Right. We want restaurants, we want bars, because we want to be able to go out and experience uh, a neighborhood or experience an area, and all people can really think of is like restaurants and bars, right? And it's like, it, you need kind of that ingenuity and you need that imagination to be like, okay, well, what else? <laughs> because <laughs> we're just gonna go oversaturated. And right. So we've got the chocolate shop now. Mm -hmm. I love the fire pits and that new like head. Yeah, the plaza. The plaza, is that what we're calling it officially? The plaza, the fire pits over there. You gotta check out the fire pits. It's it's just yeah. really crazy. Um, 
via and, uh, Square. They just got a big grant yes, that they're going to yeah. bring in a, um, I think it's the first outdoor refrigerated ice loop in Iowa. Oh, okay. So they're going to be outdoor, this is a year or two away, but outdoor ice skating. Um, they're going to put in, in the Square, some permanent music, uh, like a stage or performing area. Yeah. Uh, they're working on potentially expanding the, the Uptown Artway, so a lot of what kind of connects Uptown um, to the rest of the community is coming. The was it the Surmar Trail mm -hmm. um, is going to get expanded. So there's here in the next couple of years, it's going to the bike trail, the walking trail is going to go from Marion all the way down to Newbo. Will be connected. Yeah. So bridging two areas that are really kind of up and grown yep. the Newbo Czech Village area and Marion so yeah really bringing this you know diverse big broad community make it even a little bit closer yeah that's fantastic it's, it's so great to hear like again you got they got a plan right and they're constantly it's almost like okay we've accomplished this mm -hmm. now what's next right what's next and how do we keep kind of this uh, momentum going right really yeah very cool um okay uh, I'll go to some fun questions now because um, so I've got three. Okay. Okay. One. Uh, what's your best seller? Sea salt caramel is our number. Just one. Yeah. easy. Just it's straight. Every time. It's, um, you say easy when caramel, I kind of want to pop you in the nose. Well, it's not easy to make, right? right? So <laughs> in, in the last year, I've reformulated our caramel. Um, the recipe that had been used in the business, we're the fifth owners. Um, it had about 13 ingredients in it, and some of them I just, I, I don't think needed to be in there. So I've, over the last year, I've really worked on refining our caramel. I've got down to now where it's six ingredients. I can, you know, point at each and everything that I put into it, this in the kitchen here, mm -hmm. tell you how it's made. I'm, I'm not scared to tell, you know, anyway, what, what the ingredients are. Right, I can right. pronounce all of the ingredients, which sure. is great. So it's, the sea salt caramel has always been our top seller, but it's I have a lot more pride in it now, even knowing how how fresh it is, how we changed it to be better with some of those courses I went to in the last year. Awesome! So there's the it's the Ben Davis recipe. It, it is. It is now, your recipe yeah, now. We're on about about two and a half months that we've been using the recipe that we're pretty settled on. So, yeah. yeah. I, one thing I'm thinking about this time is like, what's the history of the sea salt caramel? Because I don't think we had the sea salt caramel 20 years ago. At least not like, you know, but at some point in time yep. in America, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably existed in Europe for forever. We just discovered it 20 years. At some point in time, somebody was like salt, caramel, chocolate. It's, it's that salty That's, sweet. It's going to be perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that was my first question. The second question is, what's your favorite thing that you guys make? Oh, that's a hard one. The, the, I mean, I, again, go with the caramels are, are my favorite, but... What I really enjoy doing is being able to experiment with different flavors mm -hmm. and working with some local ones. I uh, My most recent one, I actually made another batch today. They'll be ready here in the next day or two, is uh, working with a guy here in town called Midwest Chai is the company he runs. Okay. Um, he's a guy that went uh, did a study abroad or something to that effect in India, got taught by his host mom how to make a traditional masala chai. Okay. So like a, like a six or seven spice, you know, the cardamom, the cinnamon, pepper. Sounds awesome. That. It's delicious. Um, so I worked with him and we created a, a ganache or a, a chocolate for that, mm -hmm. um, with that flavor. So being able to work with a local business, um, help kind of showcase some of what he's doing and his flavor and then be able to do it with ours and we sampled it at the chocolate walk that we had here a week or so ago and uh, it, I thought it was a great fall flavor. It's it's kind of makes you think of the pumpkin spice, but it's mm -hmm. not quite as, as you know, yeah. cliche, I guess. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah it's for sure. Warmed, uh, you know, a little bit of spice. So, it, you know, I like being able to play with new flavors mm -hmm. and kind of figure out what we can come up with. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I like. So, is that what you would say is the most unique thing that you have that you're this coming that's coming up or that you you've had? Or? That, that's one of them. Um, the other thing that has a lot of words in it that we made. We worked with Fireside Winery that's out in Marengo. Yep. Um, they have a storyteller wine that's got a lot of fruity notes, and so we made a pineapple yuzu cardamom caramel layered that with a pear white chocolate ganache. Okay. Yep. So lots of words, but. Basically, what that was is, is a uh, a 
kind of a two-layer bonbon or two-layer treat that really paired with one of their wine flavors. Okay. So that one was a, a really fun flavor to work with. It was uh, really complex, one of those ones, kind mm -hmm. of like drinking a good wine where every time you tried it, it you'd get a little something different. So, gotcha. You know, it's just, I, so is that, so do you have, so if somebody was to come in and get something like that, mm -hmm. do you, I mean, where you've worked with like the wine, I'm just saying, do you have the wine here that you could do it, that you can buy the pears? Yes. So, you so I don't, I don't have that bond on in stock anymore. That's what I was worried. I was like, he's going to say, well, I don't have that one. No, yeah, no, yeah. I have the wine. It's, it sold it's, out. They were that yeah, good. It's sold out. That's right. No, it's definitely something we could do again. Um, one of the things <clears throat> that I want to bring into the, into the shop is not always having the same thing and feeling stagnant. Right. Um, you know, I used to shop at the chocolate shop uh, before we bought it, and we would see you know the same standard flavors. Mm -hmm. And then what I want to make sure that we do is keep those classics that everybody's used to. You know, the caramels, the creams, the toffee that you you know you can't go wrong with it. Right. But I want you know when you come in next month, I want you to see something new, so a new flavor. You know. Katie wants to work on something with cranberry, so maybe we'll do like a cranberry flavor for November, and mm -hmm. then in December it'll be a a peppermint or something, right. like that, you know, kind of trying to hit the seasons, and that way every time you come in, there's something new for you to try. Mm -hmm. It keeps it fresh for me, it keeps it fresh for you as the customer, and right. then it, you know, it keeps people coming back, and you get that experience of, oh, I want, you know, three of these that I always get, but let's try one of these as well. Yeah. Very cool. Fantastic. Um, third question. Is there is char dark chocolate af actually a healthy chocolate? Well, I'm told I cannot say that by the health department. I can't make claims like that. Um, our dark chocolate, I will say, is, uh, is a vegan dark chocolate. So it's for somebody that's looking for a... a Sweet that doesn't have dairy in it. Yeah, um, you know, that's definitely something that that we have available uh, And I will be working on like a vegan caramel. It's just I'm not quite there with it yet um, We really try and pay attention to allergens. My wife is gluten intolerant So mm -hmm. being aware of what we're doing between you know, peanuts tree nuts gluten dairy. Right. so yeah, the dark chocolate, I, I can't say it's healthy, but it's definitely, for somebody that's looking for, you know, an allergen-free chocolate, it's it's an option. Awesome. So, there you go. Allergen-free chocolate here from your chocolate shop as well. Fantastic. Um, man, I, I don't think I have much else for you today, Ben, but um, thank you so much for your time. really appreciate it. And um, are you, so you were talking about, you said you've got something going, you've done stuff with Fireside Winery. Um, and Midwest Chai are two companies yeah. that you've worked for. Um, it sounds like you were interest, You would be interested in collaboration. Yes. Like if people reach out to you and are like kind of interested, like what if there's like a cigar shop right here? They're like, ooh, there's a pair of cigars and chocolates or yeah, something like that. I, I I'm trying to that think of like same. something else. Yeah, but yeah, you know, there's so. you know, wine and chocolate, whiskey and chocolate, those type of events. Eventually we want to get to the point where we can offer some classes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working with the new Marion Public Library that's about ready to open. They have, um, in the new library, they've got a community kitchen type space that Sweet. they can do some training. I'm going to go in and work with some of their staff to do a, um, a team building event, something like that, mm -hmm. and hoping that eventually that could lead into some community type classes. Because okay. I've said before, I don't do anything in here different than you know you could do at your own house. To right. Do a I just do it on a bigger scale. Right. So there, right. there's nothing that I do that's in here it's secret. It's you know it's buttercream sugar mm -hmm. and you make it into something delicious. So. Yep. But you know I, I think it'd be fun to share some of that and you know you could go home with you know your family and make some memories trying to yeah. you know, figure out to make caramel or you know a hot chocolate sauce or something like that. So cool. Go yeah. with something to work. I love it. I love it. Yep. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Ben. Appreciate your thanks time. For time. Come check out the Marion Chocolate Shop. Come check out check out Uptown Marion. All kinds of crazy, cool, awesome stuff happening down here. Um, I'm Tim Nash, School Realty. This is Ben Davis, the Marion Chocolate Shop. Thanks for uh, watching this episode of Veteran Owned Iowa, and uh, we'll see you all later. Have a good one. Later.